afternoon. Please turn off all cell phones, electronic devices, and would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and pledge to the flag. Please remember in your thoughts the victims of the Munzee Hanukkah attack. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, everyone, please join me in a round of applause for Jonathan Walter Stuber. <laughs> Excellent job. Some of you might have noticed him. He, uh, he's had, he sang professionally for the Apollo. He's also been a, a candidate on uh, uh, The Voice. So he, he might have noticed him singing on The Voice. So this kid is going places. Keep an eye out for the future. And uh, I just wanted to present you with the certificate of appreciation. Come on up. And thank you again. It always pleasure, pleases me to see our youth involved in government. All right, thank you. Gentlemen, your first order of business today is to elect a chairman for the year 2020. I will now accept nominations. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to place the nomination on the floor for Stephen Brescia. Um, over, I guess, the past five years or so, he's been, uh, Steve has been the chairman of the legislature. And while I have only had um, the honor to work with him the past two years, I can honestly say that um, I have been able to watch and learn a tremendous amount from Steve. From the lighter decisions to the harder ones to the extremely difficult ones, um, Steve has always or usually led with a calm, calm head um, and uh, has really brought us to um, some really positive places. And while his leadership is terrific, and I've, I personally feel that in 2019, uh, we did great things together, I also feel that there's a lot more for us to do. And I feel that um, Steve is absolutely the one to lead us there. So I would like to place um, Steve Brescia, uh, make the nomination. The name of L. Stephen Brescia has been presented as chairman for the year 2020. Are there any other nominations? There being no other nominations, may I have a motion to close nominations? Mr. Okay. Benelli, thank you. Oh, I have a second on that. I'll... Thank you. There's only one nomination for chair. I cast one ballot for L. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. L. Stephen Brescia has been elected as chairman of the County Orange County Legislature for the year 2020. It is my honor to place the name of Katie Benelli nomination for majority leader for Orange County Legislature this year. The last two years, she's served as our majority leader. Uh, she's done us proud. She's been very informative. She's kept us up to date on everything we need to know. She's uh, run it very professionally. I think she deserves another turn at bat. So Katie Benelli is placed in nomination for majority leader. Uh, Mr. Uh, Biro. Is, is it not true that the Republican caucus has uh, elected her as their party? Yes, we have. Excuse me, I'm sorry I neglected that, but the even though it was unanimous choice for the Republican caucus. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Lujan? Yes, it's my honor also to uh, nominate uh, unanimously Michael Paduk as our minority leader. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with him for the last uh, two years, and we have we have been encouraged by his leadership, his experience, and uh, we continue to to be emboldened by by his leadership. Um, it is my pleasure to to uh, once again unanimously support Michael Paduk for uh, minority leader. So, so uh, Mr. Lujan, the uh, Democratic Party uh, has uh, caucus has uh, in fact elected uh, Mr. Paduk as their uh, minority leader. That is correct, unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Magistrate. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It is uh, my privilege to announce that the Independence Party has unanimously elected Mr. Michael Amo to be the leader of the Independence Party. And after a little talking with him, he finally did accept that uh, election. With the family of L. Stephen Brush's sister Stacy and sons Vincent and Nicholas and girlfriend Joan, please come to the front of the uh, chamber so County Clerk Annie Rabbit can administer the oath. Right hand, left hand on the Bible, and repeat after me. I, I, L. Stephen Brescia, 
do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and the Constitution of the State of New York and I will faithfully discharge and I will faithfully discharge the duties office of the duties office of Chairman of the Orange County Legislature according to my best ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations thank you. I'd like to thank all of you legislators for uh, voting me in for another another term of office for one year. Um, thank you to my girlfriend Joan for coming. And uh, two years in a row, Kevin reminded me. <laughs> my sister Stacy, who's always got my back. Uh, my two sons, Vincent and Nicholas, and my six swearing-ins. They've only been here twice, I believe. And I think it was two years ago, Vincent had his sunglasses on, right? <laughs> yeah. And my brother-in-law, Jeff Spreer, I'm sorry. Thank you for coming, Jeff. And my good friend, Michael Hembury, who is a village trustee in Montgomery, New York. Thank you for coming. We have a great team in Montgomery. Retired from the city of Newburgh Police Department and the, the US Mint at West Point. Um, thank you, Janet, for your nominating speech. And secondly, for bringing Vincent over. Deserve hazard pay, but it was a good day, right, Vincent? Yeah. And thank you, Joe, for the second. Well, you were supposed to second, but I forgot to tell you that you're supposed to say something nice about me, too. <laughs> I'll take it in writing later on. You can submit. You can, always. But uh, thank you again. It's a pleasure. We have a great working team here. Um, we always keep the budget below the cap. And though we have some differences um, among ourselves on how we get there, and uh, we, we come in below the cap. And we work well as a team. You know, I always have the open door policy. And, and you guys and ladies are respectful to me, and I try to be respectful to you as well. Uh, we've got an aggressive agenda over the next year. Um, we're looking at possibly selling the quarry, the three buildings in Newburgh. Um, Jimmy O'Donnell's the chair of the Valley View Committee. We're looking at po potential uses over there to keep it as a viable facility like it's been, despite the cuts in Medicaid from the state of New York. Um, bail reform, I just saw a bunch of emails over the last few days all addressed to Paul Ruskevich about bail reform. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> Uh, just forward him to Kevin, right? Kevin Hines, that's his. But uh, yeah, Kevin Hines, speaking of that public safety, we have uh, a lot of issues to deal with bail reform and other issues the state of New York has uh, left us with. But uh, you know, we're working as a team, well as a team, a lot of good things, opioid education committee, green committee, rules committee is always aggressive, physical services especially, um, economic development with E&E, &E and, uh, just so many, so many aggressive issues we have to tackle in the next year, and and I'm looking to, you know, deal with them head on. So, Joel, thank you for bringing Jonathan today. That guy, you, you were fantastic, Jonathan. My God, I thought I was at the Super Bowl. <laughs> They've got nothing on you. I tell you, if they, you know, that pool where you sing uh, the longer uh, or the shorter, you, you where you guess the minutes. I think you were probably one of the longer ones, but it was absolutely one of the best I've heard here since I've, you know. It's great. Good luck with your future, too. I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic one. Yeah, absolutely. Lee Benton, Chairman of Ways and Means, uh, he's got some good um, issues coming up, too. So, um, But I want to thank you again, and um, 
look forward to working with all of you over the next year. And I'm happy to work with you. I respect you all. Thank you. Okay, where, where are we? Let's see, number one. Okay, agenda item number one. Legislator Benelli, resolution adopting the legislative manual for the County of Orange and the rules of order and procedure for the Orange County Legislature as previously amended, pursuant to section 2.02A of the Orange County Charter, section 153 of County Law, and Article 2C1E, Article 3, Introduction, and Article 4E1A and B of said med legislative manual. Second. Discussion? Yes, caucus leader Amo. Hey, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's obviously a great thing we should do. I think we should probably spend a little more time this year. There's a number of issues come up over the year regarding the legislative manual that I think we need to address. And Mr. Pajon and I have talked about it. The one thing that came up, oftentimes I, I hear in debates among counties and departments, the difference between a policy, a law, and a rule. And I don't think we're really clear on that. Some department heads, well, the policy of Orange County is such. Orange County legislature sets a policy. It's that's clear. I don't know how a department head sets a policy. They might set a way to implement it, but I don't know how they set it. And I think that is, is a question we should talk about. I think also we should be more transparent. So if somebody wants to know what is the Orange County policy on such, they should be able to go to the website and find it. Absolutely. You can't do that now. You don't even know the policies until it comes, until you come head on with them and then you realize you're told our policy is this. And where, do you, where did it start? How did you, how do you know anything about it? Absolutely, we can okay, certainly. Mr. Pajon will put that on the agenda. I, did you want to speak to that? Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. And Mr. Amo, you're correct, and we've had discussions in regards to that. Just as a point of reference, the uh, legislative manual is available online, um, and so it's a reference that I use often. And so for that point, that is online. But I do agree with Mr. Amo, these are good discussions. I look forward to having them in 2020. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, and uh, I recall when you were chairman of rules way back when, and we did modifications and discussion, and let's certainly do that again. And I did neglect to mention when I uh, gave my acceptance speech up here that uh, we need to look at areas of the county too. We all represent distinct districts, and you know, especially in wake of what happened in Rockland County a couple weeks ago, which was terrible. But you know, we have distinct uh, groups of people in Orange County. We're all. Overall, Orange County, and we need to, to look at that. I know Mike, Michael and uh, Katie went down with the governor's force to, to meet and uh, worry about security in the Monroe area, uh, but there's there's a lot of the concerns with the different viewpoints, and we need to respect those viewpoints. So I'm sorry I didn't mention that earlier. A roll call on number one. Thank you. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number two. Legislator, Legislator Benelli, resolution establishing legislative calendar for 2020 pursuant to Article 2C1F of the Legislative Manual. Discussion? Yes. Uh, Minority Leader Purdue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for everybody out there, as you know, last year for 219, we had two night meetings. They were March 5th, 2020, and September 3rd, 2020. The proposal, which apparently I guess is coming from the chairman and, and the uh, Republican caucus, is that we eliminate all night meetings. There will be no night meetings. All meetings will be held at 3.30 in the afternoon if this calendar is approved. Um, I've been against that for my 22 years here now, and I think the opportunity for the, for the public to speak at night, to have that, at least an opportunity is, is very important. Uh, a lot of times, I know we've said there's not many people have attended, but you know what, sometimes we have some big issues and there is an opportunity for people that might wanna speak out on an issue and try to, try to give us more information. So 3.30 is like a tough time for most people who work during the day. So, I would suggest, and I'd like to make a motion, that we keep at least the two of March 5th, 2020, and September 3rd of 2020 as night meetings at seven o'clock. Second. Okay, discussion, Paul, and then, um, Lori, I'm sorry. Did you have, you, what are you saying, you had your hand up first? Okay, let Lori go first, then, then Paul, okay. Thank you. I know uh, Legislator Lujan beat me to the second, but 
This was something that came glaring at me. Uh, I know, and I'm sure most of you who've been here a lot longer than I have can attest that there were night meetings were almost 50-50 at one point on the agenda um, on the count for the calendar year. And I agree with Legislator Paduke. I think we are ostracizing some of the residents of this county who can't get here. It's bad enough that we're only down to two night meetings. And if you remember correctly, I spoke last year about adding more night meetings to the, to the agenda, to the schedule. Um, to take these two angles solely to daytime meetings when the majority of our residents are at work or getting their kids off the school bus at you know, 3, 3.30 is when kids come home from school. It precludes them from getting here and speaking to us and letting us know how they feel about items on our agenda. In addition to that, they have to sign up, get here prior to our 3.30 meeting start time to sign up whether they want to speak before or after the meeting. So that's, that's another thing that, that is, is silencing the people that we represent. And I, I wholeheartedly agree with Legislator Paduke that we have at least those two night meetings reinstated, if not more, and, and go from there on, on possibly going to Rules Committee and changing the rules this way we sign up voter, uh, voters to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Legislator Morskevich, then Lujan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I know we have this debate every year. Uh, we've tried two meeting, night meetings, three night meetings, and so on. And I, you know, I think it's been my experience in the six years I've been here that uh, attendance at our meetings is driven by issues. You know, if you get a big issue, it doesn't matter if it's during the day or at night, you're gonna get um, greater attendance. Same thing is you know, we've had night meetings where uh, we've had a pretty mundane agenda and we've had nobody here. So I think you know it's more issue driven. And the other thing I point out is now with this new technology, all our meetings are uh, live streamed on the internet and they're ar archived on our website. So uh, anybody who uh, wishes to view those meetings can certainly do that. And as far as, far as uh, you know, commenting on issues, all our contact information is on the website as well. Uh, our constituents can contact us at any time to voice their concerns over an issue. So uh, uh, to me, it makes no difference uh, when we have the meetings. Um, the only thing with night meetings is uh, it's an added cost to the county. You have to keep the building open later. Uh, you have to have sheriff's deputies here later. Our staff has to be here later, so it's an additional cost. So for that reason, uh, I'm in favor of the day meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Darian, before I don't, when did you want to address the, the issue at the end of the agenda? Okay, go ahead on this the calendar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to agree with Minority Leader Paduke and uh, my, my colleague, uh, Lori Totel. Uh, you know, this, this is something we talked about before in, in previous years as well. Uh, you know, we, we do a great disservice to our community uh, not providing uh, these options. Um, in, in fact, in previous years, we have talked about doing, as, as uh, Legislator Totel said, um, more night meetings. And I, I do agree, you know, a lot of times it is issue driven. Um, but the very fact that individuals in our community cannot make it because they have to pick up a child, because they're still at work, um, it makes it even less of an opportunity for them to be able to speak. Um, I've always been an admin supporter of more, more times, but at least having these two uh, intervals provides those opportunities. Whether or not it, it, we, they, individuals use them or not, that is, that is obviously you know, going to be based on the community. But having them is our responsibility as legislators. Um, that is what democracy is. That's what it should look like. Um, we are responsible to our community members. And, and at least offering these two options, I believe, is, is a very small token of what we could be doing. And I think that it, it is what our community members would want and ask of us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. you uh, caucus Leader Amo, then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, as we've said, we've debated this year after year, and, and I think Mr. You know, Toskovich has really made the point that's a solid one, that it doesn't show uh, much productivity in terms of attendance unless it's an issue. On the other hand, there's some fairness there that, that can be made by Mr. Paduke that says, well, let's give people a chance if they want to come. Uh, I get caught up on that. I, I understand the, the, the both sides of the issue, and I'm not really sure where to go with it. Um, but I certainly know it doesn't make a difference. Maybe we need to measure it a little better if we go one more year, and then agree that if we don't get any more out of it, then we just stop this nonsense and go back to all day. Legislator Benton and Majority Leader ben Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Speaking from the same level of experience as Mr. Paduke, we, to be honest, you have to admit everything is issue driven, and it has made absolutely no difference for afternoon meetings or evening meetings. 
And then again, we've sat in this legislature in the old government center and in the uh, 911 building and here today in the, new, in the new building. And in my opinion, it doesn't make any difference. If somebody wants to express their opinion on an issue, they have my cell phone. They can call me at any time. Okay, Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm in, now in my ninth year as a legislator, and I know that every single reward meeting we have this particular discussion, and we've tried it many different ways. When I first came on the legislature in 2010, um, our colleague who has since passed away, Bill Leahy, he had done previously to many of us being there, except for probably Chairman Thresher and Legislator Benton, um, a study, and it really didn't demonstrate any difference in attendance as to what the time was. It really does boil down to an issue-driven agenda. And I just don't want anybody to think that we're excluding anybody, because I want to remind all of you that there, if there is an important issue, we make every attempt to go out into the community. The most recent thing that I can recall was when we were changing our comprehensive plan and we added the chapter of transportation. In order to get input on this all-important document, we held different meetings in different ends of the county. We held them in, and I remember I attended the one in the city of Newburgh at Kaplan Hall. And we had a great attendance there with great input as far as this plan was concerned. Transportation is a very important issue in the city of Newburgh. We brought it to the city of Newburgh so we could hear them and we could get their input. So I don't want anybody to leave here or not think that we're not paying attention to these issues. We are doing our job and we are extending ourselves the best way we possibly can. And if we have to, we take it to the community that's going to be most affected by it. So thank you and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Anagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, actually, every single one of my colleagues, I think, are making valid points. To, to some degree, every one of them are correct in what they're saying. Um, it is um, driven by what is on the agenda. That's proven. Um, you don't have any bigger turnouts in any given times. Um, it will be a higher cost if it's night times. That's a given also. But for that cost, you do afford more of the population the opportunity to show up if they feel like showing up. Um, so having said all that, um, I'll vote in favor of this simply because I would like the monotony of 330 broken up. So other than that, both sides are correct. You sure it's not because you work for Senator Scoofus and it seems to be a Democratic driven thing or not? Just kidding, just kidding. Okay, Joe, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, I agree with a lot of the things my colleagues have said, but the one thing that has not been mentioned is consistency. Uh, the public, I frequently get phone calls with these changes in times as to when is the meeting. When the public knows when the meeting is, it's very consistent. So they know if there's an issue, they know when they need to take off of work. They're not checking the calendar uh, for these types of things. And they really are issue driven. Uh, we constantly hear, uh, you know, do a little bit better. Well, doing a little bit better here means we're saving money uh, by not having the overtime and the late meetings. So I would be voting against that. Thank you. Okay, I apologize, Legislator Nagastakis. That was probably in poor taste on my behalf. Um, but let me say, um, this was not my idea, but it was discussed in the Republican Caucus, and I certainly agree with it. Um, I've seen. The Let's go full, full circle on this over the years. Um, I remember when I first came into the legislature 26 years ago, and Richie Baum was the one that proposed that we have night meetings. And the, it, I don't know if any of you recall, I, I don't know, Michael, if you were here, or Lee, or, or Mike, but we used to have meetings at, Rob Sassy was, we had meetings at 1 o'clock or 1.30? 1.30, okay, you have a, better, a little better memory than me. 1.30. Okay, and the compromise, we discussed going at 3 to 3.30 many years later, and we ended up going, sticking at 3.30. And then we added night meetings, and it's always been agenda-driven, always. You don't see any more people at night um, unless it's a high-intensified issue or during the day. We don't have a big crowd here today. I mean, it's kind of a boring session, just, 
you know, but it's just, you never, when we had the dam scammer discussion uh, a few months ago, the place was packed at an afternoon 3.30 session. Same thing would have been at night if that meeting were held at night. The Valley View discussion, when we were contemplating selling Valley View, uh, we had the largest attendance that we've ever had in the afternoon and in the evening. We had five hour public hearing, yeah, continuation. Um, so it's really not made any difference. And um, you might get a couple more people that come at night sometimes that, that wouldn't be able to make it otherwise. But you have your village and town and city council meetings at night. And those le elected officials might want to come here at night. And they, they often, I mean, during the day, excuse me, during the day because they have night meetings. So it's never been, it's never really been an issue. And it's, it never has. I mean, you know, I like the consistency argument by Joe because it gives everybody, they know when it's going to be. Um, go ahead, Peter, you want to say something? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Also, uh, you know, by having it during the day, I, I agree that, um, you know, not only the municipal leaders, but also department heads and different uh, people that may need to come too and uh, want to be here to if their item is up on our agenda. And um, I, uh, I, I do agree with everybody. I see the both points, but um, I think that it's been uh, well tested as it's been said here. And uh, I'll be voting uh, for the schedule that's presented here. Thank you, Peter. Further discussion? Yes, minority leader. Yes, I think the proposal really was to be fair to the public. That's what we've done from going from four to three to two. I mean, there's no opportunity in the evening now when you make this schedule. So I'm looking to be fair, give the opportunity to the public, whether there's five at day or five at night. Um, Katie mentioned that the extra meetings we had, and they were in the, I think in the Monroe area, right? They were at night. I mean, there were a lot of people there. So. Even though it's 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 maybe driven by what's on our agenda, I'm just asking to be fair to the public. Give them an opportunity. At 3:30, there is none for nights. So that's my proposal. I'm sorry. Legislator Sierra. Yes. I, I can see both sides of the argument, but just so you guys know, just something as simple as Walt uh, Jonathan coming to sing tonight. He got a school. 2.30, by the time he goes home, he showers, to make a 3.30 meeting, to make it here, it's very hard. If he, and all of us have run late to one meeting or another and gotten stuck behind a school bus and barely made it here, gotten here all <coughs> late. I mean, 3.30 is just, I mean, it's very difficult for the average working citizen, which we all represent, to make these 3.30 meetings. I know we make them, but I don't see it's a huge deal to have two meetings a year in the evenings, and I, I, I understand other elected officials, I attend my local council meetings, I get the argument. But I also feel like we should be working for our constituents, and why should they have to take a day off of their hard work, our, their hard working schedule to come accommodate us? I'll be voting against it, thank you. Thank you, so we are on the amendment, correct? So a yes vote is to agree or reinstate two night meetings, and a no vote is to go with the or not to do that. Okay, roll call. Vanelli? No. Paduke? Yes. Amo? No. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? No. Cheney? No. Fagione? No. Hines? No. Hulasek? No. Lujan? Yes. Menuda? No. O'Donnell? No. Ruskevich? No. Sassy? No. Sierra? Yes. Staganga? No. Sutherland? No. Tortell? Tui? No. Bureau? No. Brescia? No. 17 ayes, 14 noes. Motion fails. 17 ayes. I do always do it backwards. It wasn't 17 to 14. What is it? It's 7 to 14. 7, seven, to 14. seven, seven, seven ayes, 14 noes. Okay. No problem. All right. Now on the uh, motion itself, correct? Yes. The motion on itself. The yes vote is to stay with the presented schedule of meetings. Roll call? No. Oh, discussion. Go ahead. Yes, correct. Thank you. Yeah, only day meetings. Only day meetings. Except for April, which is the morning meeting. Mm -hmm. It's a day meeting just a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? No. 
Amo, yeah. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Fulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 17 eyes or nose. Luhan, you want to be a no? Yes, Luhan's a no. Okay. Are we signing the book today, by the way? We usually have no, to just you. Just me? Just you. Okay. Well, I just every four see. years we do. Oh, every four. Okay. Just because of the chairmanship. Okay. All right. Um, number three. Okay. So just to vote on number three? Are you going to read it? Okay. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Republican Party of Newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of a state legislature and election notices to be published in 2020, pursuant to section 214 of the county law. We the, we the undersigned being a majority of the Republican members of the county legislature of the county of Orange, having given consideration to the newspapers advocating the principles of such party, the support of its nominees, and the extent of the circulation in the county, do hereby designate the following named newspapers published within the county to publish in 2020 the matters immediately preceding the names of said newspapers to wit. One, to publish the concurrent resolutions of the legislature, the Orange County Post, P.O. Box 405, Goshen, I'm sorry, Valsgate, New York, 12584, News of the Highlands, Inc., P.O. Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518, Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Two, to publish the election notice, notices issued by the Secretary of State, the Orange County Post, P.O. Box 405, Valsgate, New York, 12584, Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550. News of the Highlands, Inc., P.O. Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518. Warwick Advertiser Photo News, 20 West Avenue, Chester, New York, 10918. The Warwick Valley Dispatch, 2 Oakland Avenue, P.O. Box 594, Warwick, New York, 10990. Times Herald Record, 40 Mulberry Street, Middletown, New York, 10940. Okay, receiving file. Okay, number four. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Democratic Party of Newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of a state legislature. Sorry, let me interrupt you. Lee has a record and needs to abstain on number three, right? Number three, five, and seven. Three, five, and seven. Okay. Let that be your There's no vote. There's no vote, but. There's no vote. You don't, don't sign it. Just don't sign it, right? Okay. Thank you for the clarification. We're on number four then. Okay. Designation by members of the, Ar of the county legislature representing the Democratic Party of newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of a state legislature and election notices to be published in 2020 pursuant to section 214 of the county law. We the undersigned being a majority of all Democratic members of a county legislature of the county of Orange have been giving consideration to the newspapers advocating the principles of such party, the support of its nominees, and the extent of the circulation in the county, to hereby designate the following named newspapers published within the county to publish in 2020 the matters immediately preceding the names of said newspapers to it. One, to publish the concurrent resolutions of the legislature, the Goshen Independent, 132 West Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, Hudson Valley Press, P.O. Box 2160, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Two, to publish the election notice, notices issued by the Secretary of State, Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550, Times Herald Record, 40 Mulberry Street, Middletown, New York, 10940, The Goshen Independent, 132 West Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, Hudson Valley Press, P.O. Box 2160, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Okay, receive and file. Oh. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are two newspapers missing off of both number one and number two on this. Uh, News of the Highlands and the Cornwall Local for both number one and number two, P.O. Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518. They're listed, Katie? It's missing off of the Democratic one. It's on the Republican one, but it should be on the Democratic one. Okay. But every other newspaper is on this one, too, that's on here. To your party leader? It's supposed to be all the publishers. 
because this was discussed in our Democratic Excuse caucus. Okay, yes, Majority Leader. Uh, I, I recall this same discussion last year mm -hmm. after with these designations, and it was, um, we were notified that it was up to the parties themselves to give this to the office. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, if you notice that it is the uh, News of the Highlands is listed in the next two resolutions, number five and six. It was just left off of this one. That's why I'm pointing That's not. That's it's because not, the clerk not left it. off. It, yeah, it's not left off. It was not tendered by your uh, caucus. Just to clarify, we as a caucus discuss the newspapers as we do every year, and we make recommendations we haven't made any changes in the last few years so it remained the same but we did discuss it all as well and I believe all of this information is mailed to each legislator uh, when when was it mailed out December 26 it was mailed out to each legislator and that's why the new caucus before this meeting to determine what papers are going to be designated uh, it's not to be done on the floor because it's coming out of your caucuses so, in other words, it can't be done on the floor if we so. Oh, this is this is what was given to us by your by your party. We made no changes, however, from no. prior year. No, no, and this is what you have. The news of the Highlands is on the next. So they year. have the designations, though, correct? Right, right. They, they had what they did last year. Right. They didn't change it, and news of the Highlands is on the designation for agenda number five, I believe. Right, so you designated them for local laws and for notices and other matters required by law. They're just not on for the um, concurrent resolutions and election notices. And that was a determination by your caucus. I did bring this up last year at the meeting. And yeah, but you need to bring it up at the caucus meeting. When you caucus, I think you talk caucus at what, 3 o'clock, 3.30, uh, 2.30 today? But it would have still been too late to change it here. Correct. It, I would have to change it now during the vote. Because if I caucus no a half hour before the meeting started, how could we have, have changed it then? That is up to your party leader to determine what time and what day you will caucus. Thank you. We didn't make any changes from last year. Right, I think. No, because last year it didn't come out of your caucus either. No, because you did not, you did not give it to the clerk. Your caucus did not give it to the clerk. And that's how she determines what the designation is. She gives it to you to review. She, she emails it, I believe. She mails it out to you. It's for you to review. It goes to your caucus, you talk about it whenever you determine to caucus, and then you give it to the clerk. Yes, majority. That's what's presented here on the floor of the legislature. Just to try to um, clarify it a little bit further and ease people's minds, um, we in the Republican caucus had discussed this at our, de at our December caucus meeting. So we discussed it early on, I'd asked for the information and we discussed it Just so you know, the newspaper that um, Legislator Tautel is concerned with, it is listed. So just like last year where you and your party didn't get a chance to list it, we did list it so it will be covered and it will be part of our official notification. It just won't be under your party. Just to clarify. It's not going to change too much. But next year, let's get them in, you know, all right? I was, I'm sorry. Somebody remembers, let's re send a reminder to him. Okay. Yeah, that, that was my fault. I didn't notice, actually. I mean, you review them quickly. I didn't know those were, I didn't even notice those two were off the original one. Because I've seen all, most of them on the same, they're all the same on most okay. of them. That's my fault, Laura. Maybe we should. Yeah. We'll Nobody's trying to snub anybody here. Oh, Dad, you can't, you can't, you actually uh, have the ability to say no when we want to include them today? I don't think you have that ability. I need you want to include them? We made the mistake, or I overlooked it. I, I would like to have them included as well. Um, and I don't think you can actually deny that. Well, you didn't give that to the clerk as your designation. I can so I sure think to now do it right now. Perhaps you want a caucus to make sure that you have a majority of your members that want to do that? I don't think we have a... <laughs> 
excuse me, Mr. Sierra. Pursuant to state law, it, the two dominant political parties for the county legislature makes designations for the official newspapers. It comes out of the, the caucuses. Okay, so that's what come out of your caucus. Well, it needs to be done before we vote on it. And, and we haven't, we haven't, right. we're not voting on it. So listen, let's next year just try to get this in on time. You know, and it's, it's a matter of record. Your, your voices have been heard today that, that you want them as your designations. And next year we'll have them as your designations. We're not, they're still going to be designations anyway. So. So if you want to change it, you'll have to wait because the clerk has to have a new one done. And you have to sign off on the designations today. So everyone will have to wait from the Democratic Party for the clerk and her staff to make the changes on the designations, if that's what you want, Mr. Paduke. That's what I would like. Thank okay, you. Will that be effective today or next month? It'll be, it has to be effective today. Okay. We do this at the organization meeting. Okay. All right, so we'll do that. We don't need to vote, but we'll... Will be part of the. Uh... There's no vote on the designation. He is indicating that he wants to change his designation. Is that correct, Mr. Paduke? Can we, can we actually hand write it in before we sign? No, you have to type it out. Okay. Yeah, so just stick around and you sign off on it, I guess, right? Are there any other changes that designation on, on any of the other designations before we. Not that I've seen from our point. Okay. All right, let's next, be timely next year, that's all. and six okay all right are we done with that one receive and file am i okay to say that <laughs> don't start don't you have to go somewhere <laughs> i don't i don't have to stick around to sign that <laughs> you're okay you'll have to oh, you'll gosh. have to stick around and sign the republican designation so okay all right where are we can i say receive and file yes receive and file to me to be amended. Where are we? Number five or four? Number five. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Republican Party of newspapers to publish all local laws, notices, and other matters required, required by law to be published in 2020 pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. We, the undersigned, being a majority of all Republican members of the county legislature of the county of Orange, having given consideration to the newspapers advocating the principles of such party, the support of its nominees, and the extent of a circulation in the county, to hereby designate the following named newspapers published within the county to publish in 2020 the matters immediately preceding the names of said newspapers to it. One, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. The Orange County Post, P.O. Box 405, Valesgate, New York, 12584. Two, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature, Warwick Advertiser, Photo News, 20 West Avenue, Chester, New York, 10918. Three, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. News of the Highlands, Inc., P.O. Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518. Four, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature, the Warwick Valley Dispatch, 2 Oakland Avenue, P.O. Box 594, Warwick, New York, 10990. Okay, receive and file number six. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Democratic Party of newspaper to publish all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2020, pursuant to subdivision two of the section 214 of the county law. We, the undersigned, being a majority of all Democratic members of the county legislature of the county of Orange, having given consideration to the newspapers advocating the principles of such party, the support of its nominees, and the extent of the circulation in the county, to hereby designate the following named newspaper published within the county to publish in 2020 the matters immediately preceding the name of said newspaper to it. One, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550. 
two, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by county legislature, Hudson Valley Press, P.O. Box 2160, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Okay, receive and file, number seven. Legislator Benelli, resolution designating the newspapers published within the county as official newspapers for the publication of all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2020, pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. You receive and file? All right. Vote on that one. Oh, we have to vote on that one? Lost my paper. Oh, I'm sorry, resolution. Okay, I stand. Okay, uh, discussion? Roll call? Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes, as will be amended. Amo. Anagnostakis. Benton. Cheney. Fagione. Hines. Kulasek. Lujan. Menuda. O'Donnell. Riskevich. Sassi. Sierra. Stiganga. Sutherland. <coughs> Totel. Tui. Biro. Brescia. 20 ayes, one abstention. Okay. Uh, Legislator Lujan wants to. Um, make a statement regarding a dear friend of his that passed suddenly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, firstly, I just want to thank everyone and uh, wish everyone a happy new year. Uh, congratulations, uh, Chairman Brescia, uh, Majority Leader Benelli, and Minority Leader Paduke. Um, this past weekend, uh, I lost a very dear friend. Um, she, was, she was a daughter of Orange County. She, was, um, you know, she graduated from Newburgh and Larchie School District. She uh, graduated from SUNY Orange. Um, she was exemplary uh, as, a, as a daughter, as a sister, as a friend, um, at 22 years old, uh, she knocked on more doors than people three times her age. She, uh, she loved life. She was fierce and passionate and loving and kind and seeing her light extinguished so early is really heartbreaking. I speak to you today about her because I know that many of you have children and um, she died of the flu, tragically, um, within just a few hours. I, I don't know what it is to have a child, but I know that losing my friend, someone who I, I loved as a sister, um, someone who I work with so closely, uh, is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to experience. And um, being with her family this weekend, I know that they're in an immense, immense pain. And I just, um, I've always believed in the power of prayer and, and, and unity. And um, I knew that all of everyone here um, would want to be, have her and her prayers and her family. Um, she was, she was really remarkable. She was pure goodness. And, um, I'm very, very sad to see her go. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to, uh, honor her today, even in just a few words. And, um, again, just please have her, her family and her, her friends and her loved ones in your prayers. And please, let's, let's be very conscious of, of how strong this flu epidemic is right now. Um, no one should lose their child so young, uh, and um, no one should ever have to, no parent should ever have to say goodbye um, to their child. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, I love her very much. Thank you, Rebecca Grohl, for everything you've done, and um, we will cherish your legacy and your strength and your love that you showed for everything that you did. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very sorry for your loss, Legislator Lujan. Uh, maybe we can have discussion of the impacts of flu at one of the health and mental health committee meetings in the not too distant future. Uh, thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Just everybody, please stay. They can stay to sign the designations. Jimmy, do you still have time to sign or no? You signed. You're good. Okay. Good luck. <laughs>